Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Smart Buildings with Xenon. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope you will enjoy. So let's see today's speakers. Mm, this is me on the left. Uh, my name is Anka Udoc. I'm marketing manager in XR80. Uh, then the first speaker will be Dali Borbovic, CEO and Xenon sales engineer in XR80 Belgrade. Uh, next one is Nikola Maric, technical consultant from XOR80 Slovenia, and Dejan Sršin, senior technical consultant from XOR80 Slovenia. Okay, let's see uh, today's agenda. First, uh, you will hear uh, a little bit about companies XOR80 and Copa Data. Uh, after that, we will talk about smart building solution, um, later on uh, about data collection and reporting. And at the end, we will show you demo projects with Xenon. Uh, we will finish the webinar with Q&A session. Uh, so please uh, send all of your questions that you have uh, in the Q&A box, and we will answer them during the webinar or at the end. Also, this uh, webinar is being recorded, and you will receive the recording um, to your email address in the following days, uh, as well as the service. So please be as kind as to uh, fill it out. We would love to hear your feedback. Okay, I suggest we start. Um, so I welcome Dali Borbovic. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Anka. Greetings from my side too. So let's just start briefly about our companies for those who are, who are first time with us. Let's say that Exoreti in brief, uh, we are located in, in Southeastern Europe uh, in eight countries, pre present in eight, eight countries with three offices in uh, Slovenia, Croatia, and Serbia. We have uh, 15 employees in total, and our main business is uh, distribution of software and hardware solutions for energy and industry sector. Of course, covering today's topic with smart cities, especially with uh, smart buildings. We have more than 500 customers in total in, in our region and seven partnering companies uh, for who are we uh, representatives of. So let's talk more about Copa Data. Of course, Copa Data is a producer of Xenon software platform. So they are developing this platform for, for more than 30 years. So in 1987, they established company in Salzburg in Austria. And um, Copa Data has more than 300 employees. And of course, this great partner community in total of more than 300, 300 members worldwide. Of course, in our region, we have uh, almost 20 partners for different industries. Um, to in total, more than 5,000 customers and more than 175,000 installations of Xenon platform worldwide. Uh, what we do together with Copa Data is software sales, of course, technical support and professional services and trainings and certification in all three offices we have in the region. So uh, we provide any customer and any system integrator with full trainings and of course certification afterwards. Speaking about Xenon software platform, we speak about automation platform who is highly scalable in, 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 in the deepest meaning of it. So you can start really small in terms of uh, tags number and variables number, and you can upgrade the license anytime you want, uh, no matter is it additional module, additional connection uh, possibility with driver, with communication protocols or, or similar. Um, what I want to mention is of course flexibility. So you can use Xenon software platform for many different applications. So we will speak more about uh, smart buildings, but of course, in terms of smart city, it's it's much wider. So you can connect also energy part for smart city. You can connect all other um, uh, functionalities uh, regarding smart city, and also from industry and energy sector, uh, everything is is possible when we speak about uh, data uh, collection and analytics. Um, openness of the system is uh, it, it's one of key features in terms of um, possibility to connect with different drivers and different communication protocols. Uh, there is 
actually no limit uh, for, for Xenon software platform. So uh, speaking about our references and uh, solutions, uh, we will show you a few references later on. Um, let's start talking about this smart city solution. So as I mentioned, Xenon can provide you with a solution for the whole smart city in terms of data collection and analytics and providing uh, city authorities with uh, really uh, useful information how one city can function um, more, more effective. We can cover, as I mentioned, also these four uh, sectors that starting from energy and water, wastewater. We have a lot of references in waterworks in, in our region and also globally in public transport in terms of, of course, counting uh, um, of uh, transport uh, in, in every city or in, in the country. And of course, our main topic for today is smart buildings, uh, which is the most interesting, of course. Speaking about smart buildings, we've, we are focusing on uh, helping people to control the smart building, to automate a lot of processes and to see how to save energy, how to be more effective and, and uh, how to use uh, all available devices in one building in a most proper way. So according, as you see in the slide, according to United States, 55% of the global population currently lives in urban areas. This is really a huge amount of people living in, 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 in the buildings. So a lot of energy is required. A lot of automation would help uh, those population to uh, manage everything more effectively. We can speak about people and traffic flow management, maintenance and servicing, process control of all devices in, in one smart building, light management, you will see one reference of, of ours, uh, how to manage lights um, around the building, let's say, and inside the building, of course, in our live demo later on. Heating and cooling, of course, uh, heating, ventilation, and uh, all systems like this also mentioned in, in our references later on. And standard building management, with access control, with many different uh, user uh, possibilities to, to, uh, to uh, use in, in this kind of buildings. Everything can be uh, connected to our platform and controlled from, let's say, central point like the central alarm administration. So let's speak more about data collection and reporting. The best way would be, of course, to show uh, many of our references in, in, in our region, of course, done with our partners and a few references from global. So then Sershen will, will show us uh, this part. So then please, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Dalibor. I will now quickly go to show a few references. So we will show five local references, two foreign references, so as Dalibor has already mentioned, all systems, all systems uh, that are necessary and uh, for BMS systems are possible to be created with Xenon for purposes of uh, supervision, control, uh, analyzing, storage of data, and everything necessary. Uh, so we see here from this. Uh, reference from Montenegro Hotel, uh, a, a simple um, uh, engine room. So all, all data is available uh, to, to be visualized on separate screens or on, on one common screen. So uh, in our second reference from uh, Niš in Serbia, we also have uh, a more specific uh, topology, like uh, we have a server, multiple clients, we are uh, using uh, Xenon for purposes of controlling and supervision of all systems related to BMS. So heating, room thermostats, fire dampers, uh, uh, managing alarms, events. So we are visualizing, storing and reacting to all events in, in a building. Uh, Integrator for this project was uh, Taming uh, Electrotechnology. Uh, so this is 
also uh, the same uh, the same reference we see here uh, examples of um, visualization on our screens we are using um, thermostat uh, communicating with controllers and thermostat via KNX IP protocol uh, with diesel engine via Modbus protocol we are also um, compatible with um, BACnet uh, BACnet, BACnet standard uh, with our BACnet driver. So all drivers that are commonly used in building management systems around the world are also available with Xenon. So there is no problem here for uh, in selecting the, the drivers that you that you would need for communication. Uh, yeah, a big reference again in in our. Uh, local market is American School in Zagreb, which is, uh, I think, uh, yes, a three years uh, old project. So complete overview of floor room regulation. So when uh, end user clicks on any particular room, he gets multiple uh, data points, multiple um, parameters to configure, to visualize. And all this is done with, uh, for example, Modbus protocol. So if I go to next slide, we can also see, in addition to uh, room uh, controlling purposes, we have an engine room here on the left. On the top right, we can see our second, uh, rather fourth local reference in Varajdin in student dormitory, we, where we have, uh, where the integrator has um, configured exterior lighting control so they can manually uh, turn on the lighting or have it by scheduler in automatic fashion on the bottom right we have an uh, engine room from um, the last local um, reference that we are showing here so university note of varajdin again similarly like other previous references we have room controlling um, screens where uh, the end user can control any parameter regarding uh, setting temperatures or anything else in uh, in rooms, or also if you have an end user that uh, needs uh, controlling of certain parameters in the engine room, he can do it via 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 SCADA or via Xenon SCADA. Okay, I will quickly go now through the last two foreign references, which is from BMW world building if anyone is familiar is done completely with xenon so here we have uh, also a lot of modules that are commonly used uh, with xenon like standard trend reporting uh, drive there are multiple drivers used here from s7 a b and so on we have over 40 pcs so 40 uh, clients also photovoltaic plant uh, like in in our previous in Varajdin, there is also photo, photovoltaic uh, electro plant integrated in that SCADA. But here with BMW, it's on, on a bigger scale, of course. They also control user administration, elevator, everything with Xenon. Uh, yes, and the last foreign reference, Salzburg University. Also, it's done for, to satisfy purposes of um, energy management. Uh, I mean, uh, better energy efficiency with ISO uh, 50001. Uh, this particular project has 15,000 variables. If I go back to uh, our reference in Zagreb, I think there is also about 6,000 variables in Varajdin, even more about 9,000 variables or rather tags that are, uh, that are commu communicating uh, with Xenon. Uh, Yes, this is also very similar to previous references. So room controlling, uh, uh, engine room controlling, uh, automated switching of light and sun protection, etc. So before I turn on to our next speaker, which will be the most interesting part, of course, uh, this demo that we have created here is on the basis of all currently integrated projects. So everything that we will see now is already integrated and possible to integrate because we have also added some additional functionalities for, for our smart building. 
So I think it will be very interesting. I think I have covered this all from my part. And uh, okay, I will ask now Nicola, who is our uh, new member actually from this year in our x ready team. And he created a, a very fine demo project for small building, which we can also share with you. Uh, if you would, um, when you will be doing your own uh, projects in terms of functionalities, advices, uh, and support. Okay, Nicola, please take over and let's see uh, your parts and let's uh, see our demo version. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, I will be showing you today our demo project for smart building. As you can see here, this is our start screen. Uh, it is the outside of our building. We have our main menu here. Um, stop but exit button, a reload button, user administration, and just some basic things for the outside. The whole project is a demo project. The logic in the background, as Dan said, can be used for a real purpose project, for a real situation. But the, the values that we would get from sensors are simulated with Xenon logic. They are written in structured text. And for us to begin the demonstration. Firstly, I said the functionality here for lights is the lights will turn on there on a schedule. They will turn on at six in the evening and turn off at 7.30. You can manually turn them on and off here if you click, but it is locked, it is restricted. And that is, why we'll first go with our user administration. So let's log in as, for instance, the security guard. And there's a password. Yes, and now we are our security guard, which has access to the outside. He can look at parking spots. We have some charge points for electric vehicles, and he can turn lights on and off and generally just monitor the outside. More functionalities can be added, of course. The, um, the outside of the building, but if for instance, he would like to look at our third floor, it is locked because he is just his computer is just for the outside. So let's go to our second user, let's say doorman. Yep, here. And as the doorman, we can access our main part, the our third floor simulation. And he can, of course, observe just as before. He can look at um, the temperature in each room, the CO2 for each room, if the valves are open, if they're closed, if there is anybody present in the rooms, if the lights are on or off, but he has no control as he is just a doorman there to observe. He can see alarms if they pop up of the screen, which we'll show at the end. And yeah, he can look at each room and elements, get information for each room, but he cannot, change anything, open or closed as it is restricted. All users are of all users and authorization levels and everything is configurable. It is quite easy to do. For the purposes of demonstration, the project we will continue as a, the administrator. Now we have access to everything. For starters, we can, yeah, there is there are two types of screens for information sharing. We can have a pop-up screen, or we can 
habitat aside, it, it is it is completely a design choice. And we can, for instance, open and close valves. We can, if we close the temperature for the whole floor, then we can set it for each room. Let's say here we will have 20 and it will slowly drop down to 20. For this room, let's say we, for some reason, want it to be 30. And the valve will open and slowly it will go up to 30. We can configure the speed of the convector fan if we want it at speed one, two, or three, or just want to turn it off completely. It is all configurable, controllable. We can, let's say, simulate that somebody entered the hallway and the out lights are automatically turned on. When the presence sensor detects a person, if, it turn, if there is nobody in the hallway, this will, after a minute, uh, light will automatically turn off after some time. In this case, it is a minute as it is a simulation. And here we have our values, a target temperature, current temperature, uh, the status of the connector valve, how valve the, how fast the fan is, the speed, the ventilation, if it's on or off, CO2 value, the desired CO2 value, the maximum. We have a light sensor that says what light is in the room, how is the room lit, how well is the room lit, and our blinds, which are on a time schedule for this time of day as you can see uh, here the blinds are completely closed as this is the east side of our building and the sun is currently hitting it directly on the other side the blinds are automatically lifted for more light so the, the artificial lighting doesn't have to be used yeah and as you can see here uh, our light turned off automatically uh, here we have uh, maximum minimum temperature for in case somebody decides to type in or accidentally types in 40 or 50 degrees. Of the, so the, the, the SCADA forbids him from, prevents him from setting unreasonable temperatures. For instance, if we try to set it here like at 45 and turn it on, it automatically set, sets at 30 and it will stay at that 30. They can also be changed. And there is one more functionality. This is uh, a worldview screen, meaning you can zoom in. And when you zoom in uh, to, each office, to each office, you get all the information, the same as in the pop up, just for each office. And you can scroll around, go around the screen. You can push a look at this office, this, and change it also here. You can turn it off and on, you can increase the speed and so on. Mm -hmm. Now that is it for the, our third floor. We'll continue with in the building. We are going to the boiler room. This is our boiler room. We have our heat pump. We have our gas boiler. The, we are simulating a winter mode meaning we are warming up our offices. And for the simulation, this it is made uh, so that the gas boiler turns on when the heat pump cannot reach the desired temperature. And in this simulation, it is done that when three valves for, valves for any of the three floors, any three floors, are at the same time activated, opened, the gas boiler turns on. And we can see the power usage of the gas boiler. We can see the power usage of the heat pump. Uh, look at each valve for each floor, which one is open, which one is closed, the average temperature per floor. For instance, here, if we go to our building, our third floor, and let's say average temperature 15 and set it for all of them, it will slowly drop down to 15. We should be able to see it here, yeah, dropping the average temperature for our floor. 
so the and all the valves are closed here. For our boiler room operator, yeah. Now you can see uh, the the temperature on the third floor is for some reason 15 degrees. We can also turn the heat pump and the gas boiler off and on here. It provides control. The next part that we will be looking at is our charge points. We mentioned at the beginning that we have some charging stations outside. And this is a, for instance, 10 stations. We can see the information for each station. We have a station one, which was, it is charging for 70 minutes. Station nine was charging for 79 minutes. So the energy usage, energy consumption, everything. And when we, we can click on it and open for each and every station, we can open the more detailed, this more detailed view. It says it's charging for an hour and 10 minutes. The current charging power, the power consumption, energy costs, and everything. And let's say we stop the charge, it says the consumption for that station. And we can then start charging again, say a new car came and start charging again is race resets time resets and it is all saved in the archives and you can create reports about it and everything we save again and yeah these values update and they can be reset uh, once a day once a month it just shows the power consumption for that specific charge point Now for information, info, we have an alarm list. You can look at our alarms, all the alarms that happened, the, the, the one with the green ones have passed, they were fixed. These ones are still active. We can look at the complete chronological event list. Is everything that happened inside the building. Then we have a graph. It shows the power use, energy consumption of the boiler room. Here it's written. Energy consumption, the heat pump is purple. The gas boiler is the blue line and total energy consumption is the orange line. We can also turn it into a report. Here is our report for the boiler room. It's the same graph. We have our heat pump, our gas boiler, and in the red are total energy consumption. Here we have written exactly the timestamp of the report and how much energy was consumed. And down there is some. Um, basically a chronological event list, everything that for the boiler room, all the events when each valve opened, when it closed, uh, time, status, which valve, everything for the boiler room. The second report that I'm going to show is our audit trail report. It is, as you can see, everything here, an audit trail of events that a user did in our building. It says which user did what at what time. This is a 1019 when, when we logged in, security guard, it says security guard logged in. We, he turned on some lights, turned off some lights, everything for each user the doorman logged in and then the administrator changed the temperature for instance here the where it was set to 45 more than the allowed value here it's every, from which machine it was done basically all user interaction in our building in one report and down there we have alarms this is just a list of all the alarms and warnings when they first showed up when they were fixed. 
And this is basically as much as you can do with reports and with the integrated reporting function in Xenon, basically. Uh, for more complex reporting, you need a Xenon Analyzer or the little new name, the Reporting Studio. There you can have much, much, much more complex reports and you can create them. But they're much easier to create. You, you don't need knowledge of query for this. It was created in the Report Builder and Microsoft's report builder, and you basically need some basic knowledge of query to create reports like this. Okay, uh, we can also show off one thing more is our third floor, and let's see if fire happens somewhere. Yeah, we have an alarm that says it's, there's a fire, all the ventilation, ventilation was turned off. They cannot be turned on for any room. It is blocked because of course, when there's a fire, you, you don't want to help it spread. And yeah, we can turn it off. Yeah, fire was extinguished, uh, everything is okay. And it is or it also shows up in an alarm list. Uh, there is a fire in the report as well. It should be at the bottom or at the top. Yeah, they're sorted in a, they're sorted by name here. So not by time, not by the timestamp, but it is inside. Everything that, that is entered into the alarm list here is in our audit trail report. For the next part, we will be, I will be showing you, this is more for the engineers, some interesting functionalities on how it was done in the Xenon editor. For instance, each room on our floor was created as a structured data type, a custom data type comprised of multiple basic data types. They're all ESE data types. It is our office. It is of course in Slovenian. We are in Slovenia from Slovenia. And we have our office and parameters for each office. And that is our structured data type. And when we look at our variables, they are all in the internal driver because it's a simulation, it can be changed for if you're using on an actual project, for instance, as Dan mentioned, Modbus or anything, or any other of the 300 drivers that Xenon supports. Here we have our uh, floor three offices, and this is everything for the office one, for office two, for office three, for office four, and so on. And it is quite useful because when you're creating uh, the screen here, uh, standard screens, our floor three screen, it is useful to have it as a structured element because you don't have to create each office by itself. We have, uh, here, let's push it to the front. Yeah, these elements. And this is created as a screen element com comprised, it was com symbol element. It is comprised of multiple screen elements. And if you look at the screen, the symbol library and open it, we are using this as base. And here it is just one variable that was placed inside. And it's all the same symbol, just using a linking rule to change each of the variables, to change the index of the variables for each room. So basically you only need to create one symbol 
and then change the variables that are displayed on the symbols. And to make changes to it, let's say we see minimum here and save. And now when you look at our third floor, all of them changed. Push it to front, all of them changed. And if we build it, We can also see it in our SCADA. Yeah, everything was built correctly. We go to a third floor, reload. And here, on all of them, it's minimum CO2. And they, they still work normally, independent of each other. Everything is fine. Is it? That's three, that's two. Everything works as it should. Well, that is also done with uh, screens, the pop-up screen. The I showed you, for instance, yeah, here, extra information pop-up. That pops up about each room. It's, a, it's only one screen that changes variables. We don't need 13 screens for our 13 offices. Uh, one is enough. And we just change the variables and the elements with the linking role functionality. Everything is stored in our historian. We have our archives here. And the whole thing is simulated with Xenon logic. It is an integrated solution in Xenon. It is in the lab, it is by the standard, the ISC 61131-3 languages. So we can look at it. Yeah, right here it is. The whole simulation is programmed in structured text. For instance, this is a little logic for um, the lights. When there's a person present, because when there's nobody present and the light is on, the timer starts, it counts to 60. And after 60 seconds, turns off the light, resets the timer. Simple logic. Everything, is, everything else is also programmed here. The temperatures, the opening of the valves, closing of the valves, and it is directly connected into our SCADA to the Zenon runtime. And let's see, do we have anything else for the outside? No, that should be it. We have our user administration here. You can look at our users. We have a manager, a security guard, a doorman, a maintenance for the boiler room and the administrator and their authorization levels. Yeah. Oh, let's go back to the screen. And that is our demo project, our SCADA. Okay. Now we will go back. Now we're going to the questions, I think, to Anka. So, so back to you, Anka. Thank you so much, Nicola. Okay, let me share the screen. Thank you for showing us this demo, Nicola. It was really interesting. Okay, so we have come to the last part of today's webinar, a Q&A session. Uh, we have answered the majority of the questions that you have been sending us already. Uh, we, however, we have two more questions left. Um, first one is, is Open Charge Point Protocol, OCPP, already available with Xenon? So maybe if Diane would answer this. Uh, yes, I can answer this one. Yes, with the uh, latest and previous versions, it is uh, available. So with 8.2 and currently with Xenon 10. 
Okay, thank and, you. Uh, uh -huh. And then the second question. Uh, for, sorry, for a second. Here's a question. You mentioned at the beginning that the blinds are automatically controlled. How exactly? Uh, according to the time schedule, there is a time schedule programmed in, in the editor which executes a script, a group of functions to close the blinds according to the time of day for each room. And it, it can be more sophisticated, of, of course. You can share it. You can link it to the light sensor and according to the light to, um, for it to change dynamically for them to lower or raise. And it's all programmed. If it's a more complex, if it requires more complex logic, uh, you, you can, can program, program it in the Xenon logic. Yeah, that's for that question. Yes, but basically a simple automatically controlled can be done with integrated uh, functionality. So like uh, Nicola said, if you wanted to, I don't know, include uh, different um, uh, times of year uh, and position of the sun, you can add some additional logic. But basically, I think we have used it uh, primarily with already integrated scheduler, so you don't need to program anything, uh, anything specifically for this uh, functionality. Okay. Thank you. Exactly like the answer. Uh, the second question is, what are report exporting options? Okay, Nicola. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, from Xenon, Xenon, from the runtime without the analyzer, reports can be exported as, the, as just as PDF or an XML or the Excel file and they can be exported to the PC, just a predetermined folder on the PC. With Xenon Analyzer, you can also send them via email, open them through the browser, just a lot more functionalities for it. Basically, with the report viewer that you get with the Xenon, with basic Xenon without the analyzer, it can only be exported directly to the PC or to um, the predefined folder as a PDF. With analyzer sent by mail and opened in the browser and a lot more functionality. Great, thanks so much. Okay, so I think this is it from the questions. Uh, uh, um, one more question, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we can uh, give you our demo uh, for if you will need uh, functionalities and not just demo, also support for for um, for designing the similar project. Okay, I think this is it. Okay. So this is it for today. Thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, if you will have any more questions or requests, you can contact us uh, Contact us to the email addresses you can see here for each country, Slovenia, Serbia, and Croatia. Uh, and we will be, of course, happy to help you. Um, the recording uh, of the webinar will be sent to your email address in the following days, as well as the survey. So please fill it out. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback. Um, so thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you also to all of the speakers and stay tuned for our future events and see you next time. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Have a nice day. <laughs>